you're still watching ways now did you know that there are over 5600 species of lizard alive today and many of them are endangered species with habitat loss and predation by non-native species like cat and dog being the primary threats. World Lizard Day thus provides the opportunity for a fun celebration of a reptilian fascination and a chance to teach our children about the world around us. Now, most of us, um, most of all, World Lizard Day seems geared towards helping those who enjoy reptiles to celebrate them and those who don't to learn about them. So are you a fan of reptiles? I don't care for them in the least. <laughs> Geckos are the most annoying Ooh. things no, in I don't your like this house. House. They get in everywhere. Uh -huh. The lizards with the mm -hmm. no. I don't care for them <laughs> in the no, slightest. No, but wait, what's, what's with that gecko superstition that that they say you should not kill them? So, you know how... You do that, you don't kill them, I don't them, kill right? them. It's, it, no, so the things they tell you when you're young, where they stick with you even they don't, even they don't make sense. Yes. So I see a gecko and I'm like, ew, yeah, shoo, shoo, shoo. <laughs> the other day, I swear, a shoe fell on my head because I was trying to chase the thing across my ceiling without killing it. Mm. No, I don't care for reptiles at all. The day can go, it's fine. Yes. The day can go. Mm. But you know what I hear gecko is actually quite poisonous. So maybe that's the... That's the, um, what's it called, the rationale behind For saying that we don't it. kill. Because um, I remember one, one time there was a story that went viral. A woman was cooking and I think her pot was left half open. And a gecko, and a gecko fell in and died. She didn't know. Ah. They ate the food. All of them, they all died. You so yeah, you. so that, so I think maybe that's the, the rationale the be, behind. Yes, behind not killing it. I hear, I hear it's poisonous. How so. can we just keep it out of our houses? The thing that's gets the thing. in everywhere. You would think... <laughs> like I said, the day can pass. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what did you find most in the news? Um, okay. So, I have a so sometime back in July, uh, we had a story go viral about an eleven-year-old boy. Which, for me, the story stood out. He's an eleven-year-old ballet dancer, mm. um, and he a video went viral of him dancing in the streets of Lagos. And now, uh, fantastically, his name is um, I believe it's Joseph Madu, mm. um, and it's now um, he's now been given a scholarship to a school in the US. And I think this is just fantastic. We don't see enough stories like this of our young people and our young children really branching out because, uh, I mean, when I was really surprised was actually to find out that it's in quite, uh, I don't want to say poor neighborhood of Lagos, but to hear that this is, there's a ballet school in, in Ajangwedi with a self-taught teacher. And I think he was one of the only two boys in the school. So for me, it was just a nice feel good story that, you know, so a, a child has taken the opportunity to learn something different, something that is not common amongst boys mm -hmm. also. So he's Nigerian also had to deal with that, that stereotype. Matter. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not common amongst Nigerians. And then in, in the world over, it's not common amongst men. Um, and he's taking it on and to see that he's learning it. And if you watch the video, he's dancing barefoot mm -hmm. on concrete in Absolutely. the rain and he's twirling and doing parrots really and doing everything perfectly. and i'm like i mean his form looked perfect and i don't even know that much about ballet but he just it was mesmerizing to watch um and i think so it's fantastic that he's been recognized the world over so many nice tweets and comments from celebrities and all of that you know we like to connect with africa mm -hmm. um but he's gotten a scholarship so it'd be nice to see that he can change his future i'm telling mm. you they should just take him to do juilliard i think that's the school yeah juilliard is the school you know, that's the school. Arts, yes. I, you know I, I actually when i saw that video i, I was quite impressed because you know they say first of all they say blacks were not good ballet dancers because of maybe our diet our build. yes our mm. build and so but he was i mean it was for me too it was perfect it was perfect. i don't, I don't perfect. care about I don't what, what i don't know what the form is supposed to look like but it was perfect I don't and the care fact what that the, he was doing it barefoot yeah it, it just it was an amazing yeah. thing to see. Uh, on this our muddy water Muddy was it I called mean, concrete just, and it was yeah. perfect for it was yeah. really perfect really good and uh, my story is quite an interesting <laughs> one the Enugu um, government fights back um, as they tear down house of a man who demolished the airport fence. Now, according to this uh, report, this young man, I, I'm trying to get his name now. His name is, um, his name is Eme Julu, mm -hmm. was said to have on Wednesday demolished some structures, including the ongoing perimeter fence around the airport area, mm -hmm. uh, following an order that he got from the Enugu High Court which ceded the expanse of the land in the airport area layout 
uh, phase one and phase two to him. Yes. So I think the guy was just saying, okay, you know what, the airport, because the, according to the story, he had made several attempts, you know, mm -hmm. to reclaim that land, but uh, high political people mm -hmm. were, a, were suppressing it. But finally, he got this court to, you know, to award him that land mm -hmm. that he owned. And he went ahead to demolish the ongoing structure by the government. So, of course, your governor of um, Enugu State, what's his name again? Ifai Ugwani. <laughs> now took um, what's it called bulldozers mm -hmm. and bulldoze twin duplexes wow. just for offense it's um hmm, the abuse of power so the man has gone to the courts he's been given the right to reclaim his land now my first thought is what is the um expanse of the land and was there a clear agreement as to what portions were allocated to him but I think that if he has actually done that and the, he's been given an order by the court and he's allowed to proceed and this is, a, is an abuse of power the government yeah. should have also gone back to the courts that's it to say to appeal my, the case my if, same thought exactly yeah. why didn't you go back to the court that you know instead of fighting this thing like mm. you think where do we draw the line in terms of use? Of, no, it's true. The abuse of abuse, power it's just is, crazy. in this country has been age old. Um, and the more we go on, the people who are meant to be public servants continue to lord over the people they are supposed to serve. So it's, it's just a demonstration. If of, this guy of went to court today. and got the court to award him mm. the land, why did you as a government not go back to court to say, you know what, this is mm -hmm. my property mm -hmm. and let us fight it out with the law as opposed to just taking laws in your hands Into and demolishing hands. twin Absolutely. duplexes. But I, I, I guess well? if I want to play devil's advocate as well, I suppose that uh, an airport is also a secure environment. So mm -hmm. Perhaps maybe some stakeholder engagement before he also knocked down the fence. But at the end of the day, he went the, the legal way. Um, the government should as well. I think so too. All right. So I just thought to mention that. <laughs> all right. So um, that's all we can take for what's in the news. When we return, we'll discuss Faji fraud and the past life. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.